Welcome to Pillars of Eternity. I don't know whether or not I've said it yet on the channel because I don't fully have this month planned at the time of recording this, but I'm planning to play some fantasy games this month, and some of them will be ones I've played before, but some of them will be new ones, like this one that I haven't... Mm. I'm gonna play on easy. Um, this is this is a new one. I haven't played this one on the channel before. Gonna be exciting. I've never actually finished this game. I've played most of the way through it once and played a good chunk of the way into it three or four times. Uh, but never never actually finished. Oops. And one of my one of my friends suggested that I play this game on the channel at some point. So I'm finally getting around to it. And I'm excited. And I hope it goes well. Yeah. Uh so this is D and D is probably the best comparison that I can quickly come up with, but it is a more distinctive world than a lot of the stuff that. Well, D and D draws a lot of inspiration from other existing fantasy, Five especially. Ooh. blindly for the path on a starless night. Their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them, where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. Okay. I sure forgot. Okay, D&D draws a lot of inspiration from, like, Tolkien and other existing fantasy. And it's not to say this this Pillars of Eternity doesn't, but I feel like it has more more unique stuff, at least on a broad level, than uh, it's hard to say though because D and D redefined fantasy in a lot of ways too. I don't know. It's not quite D and D, but it's I don't know. I'm I I can't come up with a good thing to parallel it to because the game is just unique. And the world is unique. Um, but I already sort of know what kind of character I want to play. I had that mostly picked out in my head. Uh, though not fully picked out in my head. But I have at least a loose idea of what kind of character I plan to play. I want crippling strike or blinding strike. Full attack, full attack. Well, they're not that different. Except that I can do this one twice per encounter, so let's do this one. Oh, do they not? What needs resolve? I thought rogues needed resolve. I guess rogues don't need resolve. I like having resolve, though. Okay, maybe I don't want to be a rogue. Because I want to have resolve, but I also... Do monks need resolve? Or barbarians? Uh... 
Let's not do frenzy. Let's avoid being a frenzy barbarian for no, you don't need resolve either. What needs resolve? Do monks need resolve? What classes need resolve? You know what? I don't care. Rogue. Crippling Strike. Maybe not quite that high, but still decently high resolve. Low constitution is fine. Who needs living? Living is for chumps. <laughs> Let's be from... Which, if I do that, I can lower resolve by one and then put my constitution back at 10. Yeah, this is perfect stats. And I am a. Need something that has stealth and or mechanics. Oh, or lower. I don't know. Let's be a dissident. I am a rascal. Primary color... blue. Secondary color... no, let's do the primary color a darker blue. And the secondary color be the dramatic blue. Skin... Sure. And hair. That'll work. All right. Well, fine, we'll do white hair then, just to match the picture better. Sure, that works. Perfect, good enough. Yeah. yeah. I've got this. Perfect, perfect. Then we need a name. Ah, shoot, I didn't think about this one. Uh. I'm from Ixmitl, which means vaguely Aztec-inspired, at least in terms of writing. So... Xochi. I didn't capitalize the first letter. Xochi. As I recall, that means flower. So we're going with that. Perfect. The caravan master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red mustache and sagging jowls quivalent, quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types oh, I didn't be happy the... to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. 
He nods towards a looming black mass on the hillside. Tonight, everybody stays put, and in the morning, we'll get the path cleared. Gilded Vale's less than a day out. Understood? At last, the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rock, could be. There's a stinging beetle around here, carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. In which case, you'll be dead in a day. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. Sounds good to me. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. But see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. Adema looks over his shoulder at his assistant, a lanky, intense man named Sparful, who carries an old sun-bleached bow. He nods in your direction. Sparful nods and slides the worn bow over his shoulder. Where would I find the berries? You grow on a bush that's common around here, kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. Nothing you won't see what on are the, ruins? the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. He adds with a wink. Got different names for them. Settlers called them Inguithans. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins tell you that much. He shrugged. Not if you hurry about your business, and not if the weather holds up. There's concern in his tone, but he does not elaborate. What kind of weather do they get out here? This time of year, rain mostly, and wind. But there's a different kind of wind out here time to time. Locals call it a beowick, born out of the ether, the spirit's path. Never seen it myself, never care to. What are these huge rocks coming up out of the ground? They don't got Audra where you come from? Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. He frowned at me. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. The soul butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. Let's see about hold these on. berries then. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot. Not like most of this lot. If you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy, armor-clad woman who has spent the journey's nights sleeping on uneven ground without blanket or pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha! The woman looks up in, on her own time. She needs to find some springberries. Watch so she doesn't drop dead. No promises. What kind of guide says something like that? Don't listen you can to afford. her, you're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. <laughs> he chuckled and shook his head, then he looked at me, then he cast a sidelong glance at her. Off with you. Hayadin should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. You heard the man. Let's get going before you keel over. Mm. I know how to play. I mostly know how to play. Alright, gang. No problem. Let's. There was supposed to be a, a store guy. We can talk to these people. No. Anyone need supplies? Anyone need I've supplies? got sundries for sale. You've got what now? 
you see a man wearing simple but mostly neat clothes. He's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. He shakes his head and laughs when he notices you. He scratches one cheek with his knuckles. It's covered with uneven stubble, as if he hasn't quite gotten used to shaving on the road. Say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale, if you'd like to take a look. Who are you? I'm a trader, originally from the Adir Empire. But I've been trying to establish new business out here. He looks at his wagon and grins ruefully. The road has brought some unexpected challenges, to be sure. And I'm sure you've noticed how prickly the locals can be. But we're here to make the most of things, right? With that look like that, I'm sure you'll do well. We'll see, I suppose. I'm just trying to do right by my family. Something else you need? Looks like we're settled for the night. Tell me about the Adir Empire. It's not as big as it used to be, but it's still big. The mainland is a continent northwest of here, but the colonies used to include Rayad Saris and the Deerwood. About 150 years ago, Deerwood won its independence from the Empire. In fact, our companions are quick to remind me of. He gives you a lopsided grin and nods at the other scattered caravaneers. Why'd you move all the way out here? Because it seemed friendlier than Raid Saris? <laughs> My brothers took over the family mercantile business a few years ago, and there wasn't enough for me to do back home. I moved out to try and expand. He shrugs. Deerwood is a firma former Adir colony, so it seemed like as good a place to start. And as much as I admire the Raid Saren's work ethic, they've always struck me as a little fanatical. It sounds like you got the short end of the stick. I don't see it that way. Haddon begins restocking the crates in his wagon. My brothers and I are all working together for the sake of the family enterprise. What have you got? Stores allow you to trade and sell your items. Nice. Okay, I have a hundred copper pieces. I have a ring. I have a, sp a pet. What can I afford? Am I equipped at all? I guess I should check and see what I'm wearing before I'm like, ooh, let's buy stuff. This is not how I do that. This one. The one I meant to click. I have a shirt. And I have two clubs. And I have a space pig. And I have this ring. Okay, I have a cool ring. It does something. Something else you need? Yeah. I should get a different weapons. Wait, that's not what I meant. Two-handed. Hmm. Well, actually, maybe, though. Yeah, I have chosen to be an archer. I only have so much money. Put those in the other hand. We're doing this now. It's crossbow time. Alright, so we're looking for berries. Looking for berries. We don't have to go that far off the road to find them. Apparently. Uh, or should we go looking for berries in the next episode? There's, oh, it's horses. I thought it was elephants for a second. Horses makes a lot more sense. Okay. Yeah, I think for now. Bye-bye. Sorry, there was a lot of character creation in this episode. I hope it was still interesting. Okay, bye-bye for real.